In the previous lesson, we used the shell to create a tab bar with some tabs and names and icons at the bottom of our screen. Shell also provides an option to use a flyout menu that will come in from the left hand side with a hamburger icon or menu icon at the upper left on the navigation bar. Let's take a look at how we can do that. In this case, we're going to take the tabs and change them into flyout menu items. I'm in the shell tab demo that I did in the previous lesson in Windows Visual Studio 2022. I'm going to go to the main page XAML and just make a couple changes here. I'm going to change the text of the, our top label from shell tab demo to shell flyout demo. And I'm going to change that size to 35 because it's going to be a little bit wider. And then let's change the text of the sub label or the second label to say use the flyout menu at the top left to navigate. Now let's go back to our app shell XAML. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the tab bar. And then for each of the tabs, I'm going to change from tab to flyout item. And I'm just going to copy that and come along here and just double click and paste. So I'm including the two pages that I built in the tab sections. Those pages do not exist. We also still have our C sharp page and our XAML pages. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit simply by selecting all that. I'm going to cut it and then just paste it again. So the last thing I'm going to do is up at the top here, we have shell.flyout behavior is disabled. We're going to change that to be fly out. And let's run our project. So we get our fly outs. I can click, go to the red page, green page. Here's our C sharp UI blue page, our on the fly yellow page, and our on the fly orange page, and back to home. So one nice thing about the flyout is we can accommodate a lot more pages than we can readily with the tabs. Although we saw in the tabs, we can get a little menu if we have more than five pages. Well, the question is, what do we do if we have more pages here than will fit on the flyout menu? Well, let's have a look. I'm going to go back to my project. I'm just going to end it and let's add some more pages. So I went in and added more pages. We now have a cyan page, a black page, a lime page, a magenta page, navy, pink, purple, salmon, turquoise, violet, and wheat. I also went into the main page XAML because I noticed that um, my text was left aligned. I want to have it centered. So I changed the horizontal text alignment to center. Let's see what happens with this. So my, tech, my subtext now is centered. My flyout menu though, contains a whole bunch more pages. It goes down to turquoise. I'm missing the violet and the wheat, but notice it automatically scrolls. So I can go to the wheat page. I can go to the violet page. I can come back up and go to the red page. Well, let's take a look at a few more things we can do with the flyout menu system. I think next week we'll begin looking at using data and representing that data in a collection view. And the flyout menu really is a type of collection view. And in collection views, we can create data templates to represent each of the items in that collection view, how we want it displayed. We can do the same thing with the flyout. So I added here a shell.item template, and then inside that added a data template that contains a grid of two columns. The first column is 50 units wide and the second is just an asterisk. Let's take the remainder. And then in that grid, I have an image and a label. And we'll talk about binding also probably next week. And so here we have the source is equal to binding of the icon 
and the label is the, is the text equals the binding of the title. Now in our flyout menus, we have a title and an icon. So the flyouts represent our data source and the image that it's gonna represent, is gonna take the icon of each of our data source items and the title for the label, for the label's text for each of our data source items. And then we can also specify the font family we wanna use, the size, which column. So here I have a grid column one. On the image I didn't specify, oh, I did specify a grid column zero. You don't have to do that. We'll take zero as a default. And then I set the vertical options to center so that the label is centered with the icon. So we can represent here in terms of the size of our row definition. I made it 35. Let me run this. And that row definition is gonna represent the height of each of our, of our items. And there's our flyout. Let me change the row definition. Let's do um, 28. And now with the hot reload, you can see that by narrowing those rows, we can fit all of our pages on that one menu. I have to scroll. Now you might have more pages than this, so you might still need to scroll, but we can adjust the display of these menu items using that data template. Let's do one more thing. On the shell, I'm gonna specify the flyout background color and let's give it a color, um, let's just say light blue. I'm gonna go back to my application and now you'll notice that the flyout is a light blue. Okay, I'm gonna change that a little bit as well. Let's change this to background, to flyout background image equals, I had added an image earlier called background 30 underscore rgb.png. It's a 30% opaque gradient. Let's see what that does. So now my flyout, I'm getting that gradient, but I want to take up the whole menu. Well, we'll add one more attribute here. Flyout background image aspect equals, and I'm just gonna say, fill and now that gradient fills our menu we can also create headers and footers for our menu system I added a shell dot flyout header gave it a label with the text of colors made the font size large open semi open sans semi bold and attributes bold and they centered it and then for the footer, I also give a small label to Bob. So say, click a color above to navigate, made it small, and use the same font. And so there could be two lines maximum on that label. Once again, let's take a look at this. On our flat menu, I now get the header of colors. And at the bottom, I'm getting the click a color above to navigate. It kind of overlaps my wheat page. But as you scroll, see it stays at the bottom. I'm gonna make one more change, and that is I wanna replace this text with an image. I'll just comment out the label. I'm gonna add some text here of image source equals colors underscore header dot PNG, another graphic I brought in earlier. And I'm gonna set the aspect to aspect fit. And that now adds an image for our header. Makes it look a little, little cooler, I think. And we still have our footer at the bottom. In the next video, we'll look at how the navigation system is set up with the shell. We can navigate the shell pages separately 
just as we did with navigation pages. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.